All right, hello again. This is Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College, and I'd like to um, talk to you about the application web development, AWD 1111 .NET Framework with Web Databases class. So far in this class, I have done about 25 videos where I did a video on this MVC for Noobs article that was in tootsplus.com. I did this Microsoft ASP.NET MVC overview, which was a very short little blurb from Microsoft itself. Um, I did a little thing here from CodeProject.com, which was an absolute beginner's tutorial on ASP.NET for Web Forms developers. And in the fall of 2017, the last time I taught this class, the book that we used was from Muroc. And it was a book on ASP.NET Web Forms, except for Chapter 25, which was on MVC or Model View Controller. <clears throat> so I grabbed the PowerPoints from that book and went over them. From there, I went on and there is a series of articles. Let me just grab the first one here so I can grab this. A series of 11 articles that's on docs.microsoft.com and it's on getting started with ASP.NET MVC Model View Controller 5. And I did videos based on these 11 articles that were in the series. I'm not going to read them to you but you can see them right there. So there's pretty much one, sometimes two videos on each one of those. From there, <clears throat> I went on. And in that same thing of articles, but this was in a, a different series, there were seven articles on getting started with Entity Framework 6 database first using MVC or Model View Controller 5. So I did an a video on each one of these seven here. What I was going to do, but didn't, was after that, there is a series of 12 articles on getting started with Entity Framework 6. The other one was Database First. This is Code First using MVC5. Now, there are about 12 articles here and they average about 20 pages an article. They're fairly extensive. All right. The whole thing is also in a 250-page PDF, getting started with Entity Framework 6 Code First using MVC, a step-by-step -step guide. Well, I've decided that rather than doing that, I'm going to jump into our textbook, All right, which is there, and I'm going to show it to you in a second. <clears throat> So that's the next thing is the textbook. I also have some associated or assorted PDFs on ASP.NET that I found online. Some are textbooks. Some are just longer articles. I put those out there. In the uh, ASP.NET MVC getting started, you create this MVC movie application. So I've got that there. And in the EF database first, you, you create this Contoso University data. So I've got that there. All right. There's also <clears throat> Microsoft Virtual Academy has got an introduction to ASP.NET, and you can see it right there. And with this README, well, I guess that's for one of the instructors. So, all right. So I'm going to start going through, and I guess what I'll do, and this will end up becoming, for lack of better words, presentation zero, is I'd like to do one or more videos on each chapter in this book. Now, the book has in it um, 18 chapters. I will probably not have time to do a video on each one of the chapters uh, before the semester starts. I may or I may not. But this is the textbook here. ASP.NET MVC Model View Controller with Entity Framework and CSS. It's by Lee Naylor and it's an A-Press book. All right. 
It is from 2016, which means it was written in 2015, which means that in a little bit, you know, at least a little bit, it's a little dated. It uses um, Visual Studio 2015, so I'm going to use the same thing in here. The contents at a glance here. So here's the first 15 out of 18 con contents. I'm very, going to take almost no time to go over this. But the first full lecture I'll do will be on building a basic MVC website, which does almost nothing. It just builds an empty site, basically. Then we'll go into creating views, controllers, and a database from model classes. When you create a database from model classes, you're doing code first, all right? as opposed to creating the database first and then creating the classes off of that, which would be database first. From there, we'll go into searching, advanced filtering and view models, more advanced data management, sorting, paging, and routing, <clears throat> managing project product images, many-to-many -many relationships, authentication and authorization using ASP.NET identity, creating a shopping basket, checkout, creating and viewing orders, and advanced scenarios and common workarounds. Then using entity framework code first with an existing database, introduction to ASP.NET Core version 1.0, MVC 6, and EF or Entity Framework 7, deploying to Azure, restyling the website and introduction, styling the home page, styling forms, grid layouts and tables, advanced CSS, and finally ending with responsive websites. You can see the book before the index, of course, is about 600 pages in length. Will we have time to cover the entire book? Probably not. Chapter one will actually just go over today because it's just some of the higher end stuff. By the time we go over chapter one in the book, we'll have already done a couple different MVC projects. All right, so that literally, and you can see it's 12 pages long, should take us maybe a half an hour or so to do. All right, then we'll jump into chapter two, where we'll add controllers and views, etc. Talk about queries. Get into chapter three, where we'll add search capabilities, filtering capabilities, talk about view model. Chapter four, <clears throat> we'll talk a little bit about data validation code-first migrations, chapter five, sorting, paging, and routing, chapter six, uploading images to our site, chapter seven, where we'll get into working with the role manager and talk about authentication and authorization. If you're not aware of the difference between the two, all right, when I go and log in and I put in my JP Scott at rankin.edu and then I put in my, uh, my password, I'm authenticating myself. Based on that authentication, if I put in the right login and password, I'll be authorized to do certain things. I always give the um, uh, analogy of somebody who's at a bank. All right. For instance, my daughter, who has uh, all of her money basically in, in I guess, in like a, a charge, not a charge, uh, the equivalent of a checking account for her debit. All right. She was talking about wanting to open up a savings account. Well, when she wanted to do that, she walked up and asked the bank teller. And the teller said, well, we can't do that here, but I can put you in touch with a personal banker. So the what the teller is authorized to do is do things like take deposits, give withdrawals, tell balances, whereas a personal banker is authorized to do other things. All right. 
From there, we go into chapter 8, kind of where the fun starts, where we build a shopping cart, all right, and do different things with it. In chapter 9, then we're able to actually check out, look at what we've got in our cart, place an order, etc., update product deletion. Then in chapter 10, some advanced scenarios, asynchronous database access. In other words, I would like to be able to work with my database, but not have it hold up from me doing anything and everything else. Dealing with concurrent database updates. What if two people want the same product and try to buy it at the same time? All right. Common entity framework problems and workarounds. Using entity framework code first with an existing database. That's pretty much what we'll probably get through in the semester. Could we go further? Yes. Is it possible we'll go less than that? I guess so. Chapter 12 is the newer stuff. Introduction to ASP.NET Core version 1.0 with MVC 6 and Entity Framework 7. And that's basically creating a core project. All right. Chapter 13 is taking your project and deploying it to Azure, which is basically, for lack of better words, and Microsoft may not agree with the um, analogy that I'm going to give you, I guess, analogy, and that is uh, Azure basically is a cloud service, all right? So it allows you to take your stuff and put it out there so anybody can look at it. Chapter 14, well, there, remember, part of the book is on CSS, so it talks about restyling your website to give it a more common look and feel, a more professional look and feel. They go on then and they style the home page, talk about styling forms and other things that are on the site. And finally, it, it, there's a little bit of stuff in there on advanced CSS and how to make your website responsive. Again, I would love to go over the entire book. We'll see how it goes. This is the author, Lee Naylor. There was a technical reviewer. The acknowledgments, which you always have. An introduction. And notice what it says here. The full source code for the example shown in the book is available for download from apress.com. Well, if I do click on that, it says it's trying to connect to APRESS. I'll say allow. And I'll come up here and I'll go into the search. And I'll put in ASP.NET MVC with Entity Framework and CSS. Hit enter. There it is. Click on this. Shows you a picture of the book. You can buy the ebook, etc. All right. And the table of contents, book metrics. <clears throat> it has here downloads. So, what do we have under downloads? Download. You can download the chapters. Somewhere in here, there was a link for downloading the source code might actually be in the book itself. I will find it, promise, and I will put it in this folder so it'll be under the Our Textbook. All right, it'll be there. All right. All right, that jumps us into Chapter 1, so let me stop right here. So this one I just finished will be the intro and get us up to this point. And I'm going to make this bigger. I think it'll be easier for us to see if we do this. There we go. All right. So I'll be back to talk about Chapter 1, Building a Basic MVC Website, in just a couple minutes.